Welcome to Speak Out. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly, representing parts of Northern Westchester and parts of Putnam County. And today we're going to be talking with representatives uh, of Con Edison and, um, and also NYSIG um, about what's happened since the storms took place here in our area. Um, we've had so many storms over a period of time and our utility companies have been really working very hard on, on hardening their services um, so we will be in a better position the next time that it happens and unfortunately probably there will be a next time. But um, I'd like to first introduce uh, from Con Ed, uh, Wang Cho, who is the general manager um, of the Westchester region and the Bronx region for Con Edison. So yes. we welcome you here, Juan. Thank you for having me, Sandy. Great to have you. And also from NYSIG is Kathleen Abels, who's the supervisor uh, for construction and maintenance. Very nice to have you here, Kathleen. Thank you for inviting me. So we've been through um, Sandy, Irene, um, what else? The yeah, October Halloween. surprise. Yes. Halloween. Well, first of all, it's hard to have Halloween anymore. We seem to, <laughs> you know, tell the kids it's been a storm and really not not so good to go out. So, um, we we've had our share, uh, unfortunately, of storms, and uh, um, you know the patterns are are not too good for the future. Right. So we need to to do all this correction. What are some of the things that you found in, in the last um, storms um, with Con Edison? What, what were some of the major problems that you think you had to face? Well, I, I think, uh, as you mentioned, the, the storms, Hurricane Irene, the Halloween snowstorm, and obviously Sandy, um, we've never seen that sort of devastation before. Just to kind of give perspective, um, we have approximately 350,000 customers in Westchester County. Um, 320,000 of those customers were affected. So that's really 90% mm -hmm. of nearly all mm -hmm. the residents in Westchester were affected by the storm. So I think the scale of the devastation we've never seen before, and that's what, we've, what we're taking as lesson learned and working through you know, the communication piece, um, rebuilding, hardening the system, which I'm, you know, we'll, we'll speak about, and, and trying to leverage what we've experienced. Because this is, like you had mentioned, this seems to be the new norm. Unfortunately, you know, norm. it is. And, and prior to that, you, you know, I guess we would have locations, maybe the storm came through mm -hmm. a mini burst or something like that, and you had just a, a very localized group of people who yes. would lose their power. Yes, typically, I mean, you have severe thunderstorms that roll through, and, and that typically, you know, Will, the severe portion of a thunderstorm will only affect maybe one municipality, maybe two or three, versus mm -hmm. the entire county in which, which we had to face. Mm -hmm. Really, the entire system you know, all in New York mm -hmm. City as well. So, definitely. so Kat Kathleen, tell us about NYSIG. It goes beyond, um, you, you touch in northern Westchester, Putnam, and you go up further than that, I believe, as a company. Well, actually, we have... Uh, 878,000 customers spread out over 40 percent of the state. The Brewster region where I serve covers um, a total of 15 towns, most of Putnam, uh, the southeasterly portion of Dutchess County and portions of northern Westchester mm -hmm. going as far west as the Deconic State Parkway. Mm -hmm. And like Juan said, the damage, it was devastating and it was widespread and I remember when it hit being watching the computer being in the control center and just saying you know, watching the numbers go up, realizing, wait, we only have 85,000 customers. How can this be? Um, we lost some transmission lines. We had damage to substations. It was, it was a remarkable event. Mm -hmm. Right. Were you both there in the first storm with Irene? Um, you know, in a communication center, and and you, did you see a difference? Was there, or is that just as bad? Or I don't know whether you were there at the time or not, but. Or one, either. Um, yeah, I was there for Irene. I was there for the Halloween storm, and um, mm -hmm. it's actually it's my birthday, so it's like every year we have a light <laughs> supper, and then I go to work, and I tell my family, uh -huh. I'll, "I'll see you when it's over." Um, right. So yeah, all three storms, and you're right, it got to feel like a trend, like this is just going to keep happening and happening. But we were mm -hmm. spared this mm -hmm. year, which we're grateful for, because that gives us time to rebuild our infrastructure, to beef it up, to make it stronger. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm to withstand the next storm? I was um, actually, I, I just moved to my current role here in Bronx Westchester. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but before that, I was in Staten Island. So for Hurricane Irene and the storms we just mentioned and Sandy, I was actually in Staten Island. You know, and uh, Irene uh, was not as severe um, oh, than obviously Sandy mm -hmm. and, and, and did not impact Staten Island as greatly as it did up here in Westchester. But the one element in Staten Island that we had to deal with was the flooding. And I don't know if you recall, but mm -hmm. the entire southern shore was devastated. And uh, many homes displaced, moved off their foundation. Um, a lot of uh, heartbreak, heartache out there. Um, a lot of our folks, a lot of people who work in Staten Island for the company uh, lost some of them lost their homes as well while they were, mm -hmm. while they were coming mm -hmm. to work. So Right. It, was it is different. devastating, and, and it was devastating, but it still is because we're still dealing in Albany with the issues, uh, particularly of Staten Island, mm -hmm. um, and having lost so many homes and, and whether to rebuild, and the thought is not to rebuild in many places because it may happen again, so, right. uh, which is a problem. So, Kathleen, what are some of the things that you're working on through your company to... Um, well, you had some experiences. Obviously, mm -hmm. we learned through our experiences of what we might be able to do to have an outcome that's better or faster or mm -hmm. whatever else. So, um, you know, what are some of the things that you're working on? Well, we've had to take a hard look at our efforts. What did we do right? What did we do wrong? Um, mm -hmm. NYSEC has two sister companies, uh, Rochester Gas and Electric and also Central Maine Power. So we're always looking to for best practices. Uh, the other nice thing about that is we can tap into their resources when we have an incident of this nature. Um, I think during um, Sandy we had over 1,093 people working out of the Brewster office to fix things. Um, since that so time, you had people coming from the Uracha up from oh, absolutely. Rochester area mm -hmm. and down. Mm -hmm. right. And after the three storms in a row, it was just, we all became friends because uh -huh. they would come down, see you next week. Um, <laughs> but uh, and that's a very valuable resource for us to tap into because we do things the same way and it makes things go smoother. Mm -hmm. And we're just used to doing it. Um, that's part of the plan. We are also trying to beef up our infrastructure. Um, new poles that are going in, they're larger, they're stronger to withstand windstorms. We're installing. Are you doing any, there was a question about um, aluminum poles. Is it aluminum? Are you putting, you're putting the wood poles up again? Yeah, we're right. putting in larger wood poles. Mm -hmm. And then on our transmission line, we have been experimenting with some cement poles. Uh, we just want to build it stronger. We don't want right. to just fix it. We want to make it better. So maybe it's cement poles that I'm thinking about. That and is not, probably, right, yeah. Right, right that some places have. Yeah. Um, so, so you have new poles going in. Does that also mean a different type of wiring at all that goes along with that? Um, normally, not? no. However, we have been installing some tree wire and some of the circuits that we're working on. It's thicker. It's a far more insulated. Um, so if a tree comes down on it, it's more likely to withstand that impact. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's something we, new for us, too. Right. So Juan, what are, what's Con Ed, you're in a little different situation. You don't have another company to come in and, and offer employees well, from other places. Well, we actually we do. do we you? have, um, well, Orange and Rockland is, is, a, is our sister company within, okay. within okay. Con Edison. But they have the same problem. But they have the same problem. So, so <laughs> many times, you know, with regard to, uh, let's say, our neighboring utilities, we, right. we speak all the time. We try to help each mm -hmm. other out um, and, and provide mutual assistance to each other. Um, unfortunately, storms in close proximity, and mm -hmm. we're all we're all busy. So we do have to work together with, um, and we're all part of the same uh, industry uh, conferences and forums. Uh, at the Edison Electric Institute. We have uh, uh, mutual assistance organizations, and basically, we we canvass utilities in the entire Northeast, Mid Atlantic states, and and you know major events like like Sandy go mm -hmm. all the way out to. Midwest, Louisiana, California, wherever we can get assistance. Right. I remember meeting a lot of, a lot of workers that had come from other places, and uh, because as I was driving around the community, um, trying to see, I'm in the Con Ed. I was. I live in the Con Ed region, and my office is in the Con Ed region. So, um, I I would spot a truck. I must admit, and uh, kind of follow it and find out, you know, who who's coming because they came with their own trucks from their own utilities. Yes. So it was 
quite interesting. Uh, or somebody would call me on the phone and say, a whole lot of people are down at Arcadian Shopping Center. All these trucks are lining up. Where are they from? And, you know, I go down and see what, what their plan of action was. So right. uh, there was a lot of mutual aid, a there, lot of mutual aid. There was. Whatever, you know, at that point in time, you know, whatever we could, wh whoever was available from wherever they were, you know, we requested mm -hmm. their assistance. Um, and along the same lines as Kathleen, um, you know, in terms of hardening our system, you know, reinforcing the poles, using larger poles, um, using a stronger Does wire. Does larger, I'm, I'm sorry, are larger, larger this way or taller or? Both. 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 And, and, okay. and really that, that diameter, the increase in diameter mm -hmm. to, to uh, make it withstand, uh, uh, the, you know, both, both trees and winds, you know, mm -hmm. to make sure it's strong. We did, we had Florida Power and Light we consulted with them. Mm -hmm. You know, they have obviously much more experience with uh, major hurricanes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we spoke to them in terms of our processes and our construction efforts as well. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we are doing um, is uh, installing new equipment, what we call isolation devices and smart switches on our system. So uh, what's ha in the current system, uh, when you have a singular event, uh, let's say a tree comes down on a wire, Mm -hmm. um, and the overhead system, that could impact anywhere between seven, 800 people, it could all the way up to 1,200 people. So we're trying to basically minimize. Narrow that focus exactly. so it's fewer people. It's fewer people, so right. basically have that uh, anywhere between 500 or less. So, so when a single event, or even multiple events, but single events, mm -hmm. a single mm -hmm. event will only take out or affect 500 people, so just kind of so how do you go about exposure. doing that? That's that's how the wires are connected to individual houses and businesses and and so on. Right. So the overhead system, how how everything's interconnected. Um, if you if if you have an event, if you have say like like I said, like we mentioned, a tree fall down on, on mm -hmm. a wire, that feed will go out, you know, radially out to feed say those 800, 900 mm -hmm. customers. Mm -hmm. Now we go, we go, we're going to either redesign those those portions, or um, isolate those um, what we call spurs off off the main feeder uh, source, and mm -hmm. and uh, limit the number of customers fed on the on mm -hmm. those on those portions. Again, it's interesting because you know with the storm, I remember you know people were without power, and it seemed so far away mm -hmm. from where the problem was, yes. and. It was, it, was, it was hard for everybody to understand it because, you know, we're, we're not obviously professionals in this and we're, you know, trying to figure out the, uh, the length of this. Um, are, you do, are you doing that also? Uh, yes, we are. Gonna... We're installing a lot of reclosing devices. We're installing sectionalizers. We're installing more automated equipment so that we can do mm -hmm. exactly what I was talking about, um, you know, isolate the problem, minimize the size of the outage and get people back on faster. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, a lot of people, when I talk to the customers, they're always, oh, the grid, the grid. And I think there's a big misconception because when I hear grid, I'm thinking graph paper with little perfect boxes and 90 degree angles. But mm -hmm, our circuits mm -hmm. really don't run that way. Mm -hmm. um, back when they first electrified the area, the construction was you know, point B, point A to point B, straight line. And at that time, we were a much more agrarian area. It looks, I have old pictures of the area. It looks like Kansas. It's stone walls and farmland. And now the Hudson Valley region is uh, heavily forested with lots of trees, mature trees and landscaping. Um, the circuits tend to run from the substations along the roadways so that mm -hmm. the lines and the poles are accessible and then go to their homes. So it's not mm -hmm. You know, a perfect box. Right. It actually just—it's like it fans out mm -hmm. versus exactly. versus a, a grid. And those those your grids those, must look very different, though, from Con Ed to Nysig, aren't they? Because of the terrain, the or maybe not. I, I mean, you you really have kind of different systems. One, you, well, you're Westchester in the Bronx, pretty heavily populated, whereas you're in the more rural mm -hmm. areas. So it's a do they look different, or are they actually, the same they're, model? They're, they're actually the same concept in the overhead mm -hmm. areas, uh, you know, between NYSEC and ourselves, and mo pretty much most of the, the country. Um, for Con Edison, so as, as you get closer to the city, though, and, and the Bronx is totally different, that mm -hmm. is a mm -hmm. true grid, mm -hmm. you know, underground mesh kind of, uh, as, as uh, Kathleen mentioned, uh, on graph, pe graph paper. But uh, it, is, it is the same concept in terms of uh, how we distribute the power to our, mm -hmm. our customers in Westchester. You have a different, you know, one of the issues is the trees came down. Well, 
you know, some were live trees. <laughs> I mean, yes, and that they were even ones that you would have labeled that needed to come down. Um, you know, there might have been some branches that were close. I remember in Briarcliff, and, and they had a lot of the streets in Briarcliff that, you know, just covered with these gorgeous big trees, and they were just all over, all over the roads. Mm -hmm. And so, what kind of, of this isn't hardening? Well, maybe it is hardening, or it's making sure that you don't have trees falling down on all of our wires. What kind of projects do you have going on with with tree uh, trimming and or tree removals well, or whatever? A tr I, I mean, we we really believe that tree trimming is 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 that one of the the, the main um, preventative steps we can take. To limit the severity of impact of any major storm. I mean, Con Edison, we we basically began um, a robust program probably about five or six years ago, and I think that's uh, that's when a lot of um, uh, we had to go to a lot of community leaders and explain mm -hmm. what we were doing at that point in time. Um, you know, we we do spend our tree program. We uh, was approximately nine million dollars. In scope uh, in 2011, it was 12 million dollars last year, and we plan to maintain that level mm -hmm. of, of spend um, to to basically prevent trees. You know, first, you know, identify unhealthy trees, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. or danger mm -hmm. trees, and then also the clearance issues because the trees are alive, so they continue mm -hmm. to grow. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure we are trimming those trees, and um, at the end of the day maintain continuity of service so folks can t continue to have lights and heat mm -hmm. and all those critical things that we know we need. Right. But you have probably more trees in your area, do you? We do. <laughs> in a rural uh, area. Certainly more <laughs> than what they have in the Bronx. Yes. Um, right. We've also ramped up um, our tree trimming program. Um, for us, tree contract is the number one reason for power outages. And um, this year in November, we decided to add an additional 111 miles of tree trimming in Putnam and Westchester counties. It really does make a difference. And I think our customers, of, we were talking about this prior to the show, how much we all love our trees here, mm -hmm. and we do. But after those three events, I think our customers realize that this is the way to keep the mm -hmm. lights on. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there are many trees, large mature trees, that are outside our right of way. We do not have the right to trim them. And occasionally, they fall over. And even if they're 40 feet from the lines, they can take an overhead mm -hmm. line out. Mm -hmm. Well, what people have to remember is if they have a dead tree, they just, you really have to get it down. If, if, and, and that's an easy one because uh, they yeah. don't have any leaves. <laughs> They're not providing much for you. But sometimes people just, it is expensive to cut down a tree. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, if something falls on your roof or whatever, that is also very expensive. And that's one of the things I think that differentiated um, the Halloween snowstorm say even from Sandy is when you have snow on deciduous trees, the leaves right. are still on it and that weight is just more than they can bear. Right. I lost a lot in that one. I, I, I lost a lot of branches and mm -hmm. uh, was surprised that some of them have actually restored themselves. I, some trees, the maple trees are really good that way. But, um, well, the other area too that um, there was concern about, communications. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how, because I was at the other end, you're out there trying to get things going. I'm in my office listening to all the complaints from my constituents who called. Either they had a cell phone or they went to the library and, and got themselves plugged in and whatever, and, and they would call. And I was on a lot of the conference calls that, that you had. But there was the whole issue with, with communications with people in the community as to what was the problem and maybe when it might get resolved. Mm -hmm. and, and I know it was hard to tell people exactly. I think you had somewhat of a triage where you, you took care of hospitals mm -hmm. first or um, nursing homes or schools. You know, and, and I think people could understand that. You were, you were taking care of, of probably the centers where people needed it the most. But, are you going to do things differently with the communication aspect of it all? Did you feel like there was something that, that you were missing during this period of time? Y yes. Um, I, think, uh, I think one of the major challenges throughout the whole storm was, was communicating to the customer. I mean, communicating to each munis municipality mm -hmm, as mm -hmm, well, mm -hmm. um, as, you, as mm -hmm. you've dealt with throughout right. the storm. Um, I, we've taken some steps we've, uh, already uh, to try to provide more transparency, at least at the municipality level. We've created a municipal dashboard where each municipality can really key in on 
their area and what how many customers are infected in their mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, municipality. Also, they can um, um, enter any issues on on that website as well. And we provided actual our infrastructure. Right, which is really important because they have people, they might have their public works people in their town or village um, on the scene yes. and, and you don't have you don't have the ability, you have people going out assessing, but you know, you don't have everybody in every community that's that's working hard at this. So that, right. that's very helpful. Right. So that that yeah. should really help with the communication with the municipalities directly. And then, you know, leveraging, you know, yourself and other other community leaders to 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 provide that information to mm -hmm, your constituents. Mm -hmm. um, we also, uh, since Sandy, we've really um, bolstered our mu municipal liaison. And for, for people who don't know, we're gonna, we actually had a company person sitting with each municipality to really bridge the communication on any needs, mm -hmm. specific interests of the... So they were in the community or were they by phone in the community? They were in the community. community. They were in the community and their, they, their role is to really act as the liaison back to the company, mm -hmm. making mm -hmm. sure that there's information going back and forth. In, in prior years, and prior storms, they used to come during the initial wave where the, the initial priority is road clearing, right? Mm -hmm, road, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. storm comes. Mm -hmm. uh, in Sandy, we had over a thousand roads closed in Westchester right. County. Right. The trees were down, the lines, the lines were, down, were down, you couldn't get through, right? right. So, so our main priority, because we need to get essential services on the road, number mm -hmm, one, mm -hmm. and also we have to get on the road as well to, mm -hmm. to begin restoration. So that's the, pr that's the top priority. And uh, we work closely with the DPWs of each community to go out there and make sure that the lines are safe, the lines are de-energized, then we can begin the road clearing mm -hmm, process. Mm -hmm. But those municipal liaisons, after that was done, they left in, mm -hmm, the, in mm -hmm. previous events. This in Sandy, we actually had them there from beginning to the end of the mm -hmm. event, and we're going to make that the standard process. Mm -hmm. and, that, and also, we have dedicated people, so it's not that we randomly choose a company person to become the liaison, that they already have a rapport with the community Mm -hmm, Understanding mm -hmm. many of the liaisons live in the community, right? You know that they'll represent. That's very helpful. So that that should also help with the communication. Mm -hmm. um, what about the communication to the public mm -hmm. about where you're going and, and what's happening next? And I, I know you had a system in place uh, with Sandy, but um, but I don't know that it was as up to date as it should have been mm -hmm. um, in the process. Are, is that something you're focusing in on that that people can? I mean, people don't always have electricity, so right. they might have to go someplace to to go up on a computer. But to be able to, you know, plug in the name of their street or whatever and uh, so, what is happening. So one of one of the difficulties we had was giving concise uh, estimated time of restorations mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to customers. Right and and. Uh, we feel that we just need we need to provide an accurate estimated time of restoration, whether mm -hmm. it's tomorrow or a few days out. At least they can plan. They can plan. They can plan. And and, and right. that and we know that right. that is a, a critical element. So we we've changed our process to make sure that whatever estimated time of restoration we're putting out there, we mm -hmm. are our focus now is to meet that estimated time of restoration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's a sort of shift in how we're doing business. Um, so we've changed our, our protocol mm -hmm, in that regard. Mm -hmm. uh, we've we've um, we've created additional customer scripts to go out there and, and inform people of what's happening, mm -hmm. you know, and, and when what the next steps are going to be with mm -hmm, regard mm -hmm. to them. So so we've taken steps, um, and we believe that it will help with the transparency mm -hmm, and the information. Mm -hmm. It will help people plan their lives better, uh, and and uh, you know I think. I think it'll be better, you know, yeah, but I'm sure there's well, still a long way. We're going to test you <laughs> out, test I guess, it. in the next storm. So. <laughs> you can give us a grade next time. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I, I think we've put a lot of things in place you uh -huh. know, that will help uh, with that communication. Right. Kathleen, have you done the same in, in NYSIC? With yes, NYSIC? we have. Uh, internally, we've improved our phone and data communications. Um, we are now ramping up the ranks of our public liaison officers. Mm -hmm. um, we did have people in Westchester, Office of Emergency Management around the clock, as well as representatives in the actual towns. Um, not all of them, mm -hmm. but most of them. Um, now we'll have increased people of that nature who were training intensely so that they'll be able to step up. And as uh, Juan said, they'll be the liaison. So, 
You know, mm -hmm. you'll have somebody mm -hmm. that you can go to and that person can get you accurate information. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We're also improving our website, uh, www.niceegg.com. You can go to Adage Central and see what's going on around the state and, and zero in um, on your estimated restoration time. So that's a good thing. So um, we urge all of our customers, you know, if there's an event coming and we usually know mm -hmm. about it ahead mm -hmm. of time, make sure you, you know, charge up your cell phone, charge up your computer. It's I good to have one hardware I think we're all getting a little bit better phone. at this, yep. I think, with experience. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have lists that you give out to your consumers about, you know, uh, you, well, I know, other, some people do, like the Red Cross has this go bag, uh, red bag, and you put all your stuff in in case it's an emergency and you have to leave. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm wondering, are you, are you publishing in your bills and so on, different things that people should we think about having? Bill inserts, what to do right. during a storm, yeah. prior to a storm, um, you know, stay away from down wires. Um, right. And that's on our website too. So. Right, and yeah. we just hope people pay attention. Right, and we, right. Do, we do the same thing, you know, and all that information is in, on our website, you know, in terms of preparation for a storm and what things to look mm -hmm. out for. One of the other things that came along um, as you were trying to get recruits in from other places, I especially noted this with Con Ed, that there were some questions about whether some of the local um, people could be helpful, the, the electricians locally, could they do anything for the, the company, um, you know, could there be contracts in case you need more people uh, to be able to do, because I, I know there's a, a standard where you have to you have to remove the trees so you can get the trucks, and then a, a certain person comes in to do the high wires, and then somebody's doing something else. I mean, mm -hmm. you've got it all in different categories. Are there are there local options for you to have contracts with people locally? And you know, I don't know whether that's something you've thought about or not. Well, I I I, I view that more in, in terms of any of the services that we would need from the local muni municipalities, mm -hmm. you know, whether we need support uh, from the FD or traffic control or what, uh, those sorts of things, I think, um, you know, we, we discuss those locally and, and, and get assistance from, you know, the, the town uh, or the DPW that we're dealing with. Um, with regard to the actual line work, it's, it's, mm -hmm. ve it's very specific and, and really that's why uh, we're looking for line workers, and we need that skill set to really mm -hmm, help mm -hmm. with the actual restoration mm -hmm. itself. But leveraging all the the other services support, you know, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, we we definitely work closely together with the munis to try to mm -hmm. try to help with that. All right? Do you have anything, Kathleen, that you do differently? At well, all? there's been some discussion, but each county has different rules in terms of licensing electricians. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Our number one concern is always safety. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. you know, we address down wires first. Um, we do use local contractors. Um, we use retirees. We call mm -hmm. them back in. Right. Um, we get many phone calls coming in. I'm a tree crew. Fine. We can mm -hmm. use you. Um, we have contracts with um, area environmental groups to help with oil spill cleanup. So that's mm -hmm. all in mm -hmm. place. And as Juan said, we work very closely with our highway departments. And I have the advantage of you know working in small towns, so I already know them. Mm -hmm. You know, we work mm -hmm. together on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, a beautiful sunny day and a tree falls down on the roadway. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, those relationships are already in place, so we already have that trust. We already have each other's cell phones. Um, you know, you have a, a top-notch highway superintendent in Kent, Tony Caravetta, mm -hmm. but I mean, we, we know one another, so mm -hmm. we just pull it together, whether it's a huge event or just some random outing or a car accident or whatever. Right, well, as um, we're, we're gonna have to close, but, um, I, I, I hope in the next storm, uh, I know we've all learned something from it, we all have, and that we will be better prepared uh, as we go forward with both of your companies and other, other service providers too. And we just hope that there aren't too many more storms that we have to try. So I thank you both for coming. Oh, it was a pleasure. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much for watching. If you have any questions, give me a call at 914-941-1111. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.